I wonder what OPEC's response is uh, in the in the first instance to this attack. Yeah, thank you very much for uh, having me. Uh, we in OPEC, as you would expect, uh, are monitoring very closely uh, developments since Saturday in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia uh, with great concern. Uh, however, uh, we are uh, uh, pleased that the Saudi authorities and Aramco in particular have uh, risen to the challenge and uh, the way and manner in which they have handled this uh, uh, development uh, is uh, commendable. Are you in touch with the Saudis? What's the nature of your conversation been? Uh, they are focused uh, in uh, ensuring that uh, uh, security of supply uh, is uh, addressed. Uh, is they are uh, working around the clock uh, to restore at least some of the uh, lost supplies. If they have reassured their customers. We have not uh, had any force majeure uh, so far. They have ample supplies in inventories. Uh, that uh, they are going to tap into. Uh, so by and large, I think they have contained the situation so far, but uh, we are waiting for the regular updates uh, that Aramco uh, will be uh, informing uh, the market. Good morning, Mr. Burkindo. It's Anne-Marie Hordern here. Thank you so much for joining us. As you say, the Saudis uh, have been, there's been no force majeure, but at the same time, they are telling some customers that they'll have to buy different grades of crude. Is that worrisome for you and from a market standpoint? Uh, no, not at all. It is not unusual. Uh, sometimes due to operational reasons or even requests from customers, uh, the quality may change from time to time, and that does not translate into a force major. It is uh, highly commendable, considering the magnitude of this uh, attack. As you said, the worst in the history of oil, uh, and yet uh, the kingdom is uh, strong and firm on ensuring that all their customers remain fully supplied. They have not uh, issued any force major. Uh, they are mobilizing uh, their stocks, their inventories, both within and outside the country in different locations. And they have been in touch with us uh, as well as with other uh, member countries. So by and large, I think uh, the situation is under control. I know you're in Baghdad. You attended the Iraq Energy Forum. At the last JMMC just last week, Iraq and Nigeria, they finally promised to implement their cuts. Given the situation now, does that mean that they could pump at will and not have to uh, comply with those cuts they promised they would see? I have uh, had a series of meetings with the leadership uh, here in Baghdad. And they have uh, reassured me that uh, they will remain uh, faithful uh, to their obligations as uh, eloquently uh, put forward at the 16th uh, Joint Ministerial Monitoring Committee in Abu Dhabi a couple of uh, days ago by Minister Khamer al Uh So there is no unilateral uh, action that will be taken uh, by either uh, the Iraqis or Nigeria, or whom both have been in contact with. What does this mean for the overall OPEC plus deal? We have prices soaring, we have lots of lost production. Does the deal need to be reframed? Uh, at the moment, uh, we remain focused on ensuring that uh, security of supply is guaranteed globally. Uh, and to stability of uh, the oil markets uh, 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 remain firm. Of course, we, as expected, uh, there's a lot of volatility in the market. Uh, the rally this morning in Asia and now in Europe and the U.S. Uh, were not unexpected, but uh, we remain focused uh, uh, that uh, uh, stability is returned as quickly as possible and uh, supply is guaranteed to all markets and oil uh, remains a reliable and dependable uh, source of energy. 
I know you've also been speaking to the IEA's FATI B-roll. What is the IEA's assumptions right now about the supply and demand picture? Yes, we have been comparing notes uh, with the IEA with the FATI B-roll on the current uh, situation. They are uh, equally concerned with the turn of events. Uh, but uh, in reviewing the situation, FATI and myself uh, both uh, uh, acknowledge that uh, uh, the situation has been arrested by the Saudis in a very swift manner uh, and uh, the impact would be minimized uh, going forward. And uh, we remain also in regular contact, not just between ourselves, but also with the Saudis and other uh, producers. And we, we plan to continue this uh, coordination uh, in the next uh, couple of days. Will there be, by any chance, a, an emergency OPEC meeting? Can you see that happening, especially if the uh, Saudi facilities don't reach full capacity in the next coming weeks? At the moment, uh, an extraordinary meeting uh, is not on the cards. Uh, we are continuing together with our Saudi colleagues as well as other producers uh, within the Declaration of Cooperation uh, to monitor the situation. Uh, the Saudis, uh, Aramco in particular, will be given uh, regular updates uh, on the extent of the damage uh, and how long it will take them either to replace or to repair the units involved and how much in terms of volume will be affected. So they, they have been very transparent, uh, as always, uh, and uh, we will be coordinating very closely with them. But we do not have any panic button, per se, in OPEC at the moment. What is your assumption, Secretary General, what is your assumption around Iranian crude at this point? Uh, it, it seems increasingly unlikely that this finds its way into international markets. When we remain uh, hopeful that all our countries uh, that have been impacted by one uh, sanction or the other, including the Islamic Republic of Iran, Venezuela, and Libya, that have been exempted from the supply adjustments, will, in the fullness of time, return to the oil budget. Uh, sanctions uh, are not uh, 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 helpful uh, to a smooth uh, running uh, of the markets in an efficient uh, manner. They cause disruptions uh, to, to markets. Uh, and uh, we remain cautiously optimistic that uh, the issues involved will be resolved by the parties uh, themselves. The Houthi rebels have said that they uh, consider this, the, the, the refinery to still be a target. Uh, is OPEC braced for further disruption here? Should OPEC be taking uh, some special measures around that? Yes, the issue of security definitely is, uh, uh, is now of greater concern than before, not only in the kingdom, but all our member countries, uh, in order to uh, remain reliable and dependable suppliers of oil to all markets, we have to secure our facilities uh, and our operations. And this is a very big lesson that we have learned uh, from the kingdom. And I'm sure we're going to use uh, this uh, unfortunate experience uh, to ensure that uh, such an incident does not repeat itself. Mr. Burkindo, I just want to clarify, do other OPEC nations need to increase to make up for the lost production we're seeing out of the kingdom? Whatever decision that will be taken uh, will be a collective decision of not only OPEC now, but the OPEC plus in the DOC. Uh, and it is premature at the moment uh, to begin to uh, contemplate on what will be done in terms of volume and when. Mr. Burkindo, what about what the United States is doing, tapping the SPR? Does that worry you and, and your partners at OPEC Plus? 
when we also uh, read in the news uh, that the U.S. Uh, is uh, thinking of uh, releasing uh, from the SPR depending on the impact if needed, I think they qualified it. Uh, it is only if needed. So uh, we will continue to wait uh, and give the Saudis enough time. There is no need to panic at, at the moment. Uh, what we have seen in the market today uh, is an initial reaction uh, by the trading community. Uh, but going forward, uh, I think uh, the uh, updates that will be coming uh, from Saudi Arabia will further uh, calm the markets. Mm. Mr. Ricardo, I know there's a lot of storage facilities around the world for Aramco, not just in Saudi, but Egypt, Japan, the Netherlands. But those reserves have been coming down. They're now the lowest we've seen since 2008. And Rapidan's Bob McNally said it's about 37 days for Begay's production loss that those reserves can fulfill. Are you worried about global reserves? Well, security of supply as well as security of demand are two sides of the coin. Uh, in this case, the priority is to ensure that markets are well supplied, uh, is to ensure that our customers do not panic, and, and the markets also uh, do not continue to go in frenzy uh, with this very high level of volatility that we have uh, seen today. And I remain confident uh, that uh, working together uh, with the kingdom and other producers within the declaration of cooperation, uh, we would overcome uh, this unfortunate uh, situation. Do you think this will have long-term implications, uh, Mr. Barkindo, in terms of customers maybe seeking alternatives to Saudi supply where that is possible? Uh, Saudi Arabia has been uh, uh, a bastion of stability uh, for a very, very long time. Uh, they have been faithful uh, to their contracts with their customers. Uh, their customers have been relying on them for tickets, uh, and they have fulfilled their own bargain. Uh, they are a role model uh, within the group on how to conduct this business and ensure the longevity of oil uh, in the energy basket. So I don't think this will change. Uh, this is an, is an unfortunate situation uh, that we have found ourselves in. It's not only the kingdom, but the OPEC, as well as the OPEC and non-OPEC in the declaration uh, of cooperation. And by extension, the entire world, both producing and consuming nations, I have spoken to a number of consuming nations are also uh, very concerned and uh, have expressed their solidarity with OPEC.